We are now going to relate this back to diagonalizations. Or rather, we're going to relate this back to something similar to diagonalizations. We've seen this before in the last section. The idea that if you can diagonalize A, multiplying by A is basically like multiplying by the diagonal matrix in the sense that these two spaces are isomorphic, these two spaces are isomorphic. And this mapping from here to here is the isomorphic image, as it were, of this mapping from here to here. Now, I said that was true for diagonal matrices because that's the context where we've seen a factorization that looks like this. However, D does not need to be diagonal for this to be true. And with that observation in hand, let's look at a discrete dynamical system with complex eigenvalues. Here's a matrix with complex eigenvalues. Complex eigenvalues give complex eigenvectors. We can't really find these using our calculator. We would have to use Wolfram Alpha or something more powerful. Now, because this isn't a proof-based class, I'm going to just sort of make a lot of assertions, and these are true, even if I'm not going to prove them. First, we create a matrix that has as its columns the real part of one of these eigenvectors and the imaginary part of one of these eigenvectors. So you see, we have two eigenvectors, one from the plus, the other from the minus. We'll select one of them. It doesn't matter which. Let's select the plus then the real part is negative two five and the imaginary part is positive four zero. This is similar to the diagonalization you're used to, except instead of using two different eigenvectors to get the columns, one eigenvector is providing both the columns. Now, it is always going to be true that after we've done this, P inverse times A times P equals a special matrix of the form we looked at in the previous video. Um, in this particular case, point eight, negative point six, point six, 
0.8, which tells you then that A equals P times a special matrix times P in inverse. So here's our diagram. And remember that this and this are isomorphisms. And remember what that means. Isomorphic objects are identical. This dynamical system and this dynamical system are the same in every way that matters. And because we have a special matrix down here, we know what is happening. As time passes, we have rotation and we have scaling. We're either rotating out we're rotating in, in a spiral pattern, or we're forming a circle or some other kind of closed figure. And because isomorphic objects are identical, that's what's happening up here as well. Therefore, complex eigenvalues always result in rotational behavior. They could cause the dynamical system to spiral out or to spiral in or maybe form a closed loop. But if you see eigenvalue, if you see complex eigenvalues in a dynamical system, that means rotation. So although you might think of complex numbers, even at this stage in your career, as being these kind of weird abstract things that don't have a lot of real world meaning, actually they show up in real world situations all the time, basically, any discrete dynamical system where you have some kind of rotational behavior has complex eigenvalues hiding behind the scenes.